Let's go to Castles Field for this showdown between two undefeated teams. And Sparta picks up the first down here while Matthew Mate hit Jake Zerillo, who breaks the tackle and picks up 14 yards to the Jefferson 20. The Spartans draw the first blood here, while Alex Milk can take it in from five yards out as he dives into the end zone, and it's 7 0 Sparta just a minute plus into the game. Florida's defense forces Jefferson to punt here, and it's Ryan Rossiter coming off the edge for the block, and then he picks it up for the 12-yard scoop and score, and Sparta has a 14-0 lead with 8.08 to go in the first quarter. Great start for the Spartans. Jefferson gets its first first down of the game here. It's hard-charging Jacob Jakova with a nice spin move and a 13-yard pickup to the Sparta 45. But the Sparta defense, which was terrific, gets the sack here as it's Mike Rossiter with the tackle and the loss of 10 yards forcing a Jefferson punt. Then it's Matthew Monte zipping it to Jonathan Byers who holds on despite the big hit from Alexander Lemming with a 23-yard pickup and a first down at the Jefferson 40. Tough catch. But on fourth and one, Sparta stopped, watch Colbin Foddy bust in and wrap up Alex Milligan and the Falcons turn the Spartans over on downs and Sparta has a 14-0 lead after one quarter. All right, second quarter we go, and Jefferson gets on the scoreboard. Watch Andrew Benfati boot the 23-yard field goal, and the Falcons trail 14-3 with 10.44 to go in the second period. Sparta gets the ball back after a Jefferson punt, and on the first play of the drive, it's Matthew Monte with the perfect touch to Eric Castorina, and he does the rest as he outruns everyone to the end zone for 80 yards and a touchdown, and it's 21-3 Sparta with 6.46 to go in the first half. And that's our score at the end of the half as the second quarter ends here with Jason Giratano's second sack as he corrals Logan Hollerider for the big loss. Third quarter we go with Jefferson putting together a drive and it's Logan Hollerider dropping it right into Brandon Magnata's hands for the nice 33-yard pickup and a first down to Sparta 47. And it's Jalen Torres on the double handoff to Jefferson as he picks up a first down inside the Sparta five-yard line and it's first and goal. And the Falcons score here, watch Connor Brown power in as he pops into the end zone, and it's 21-10 Sparta through three quarters of play. Fourth quarter we go, and watch Matthew Monte flick it to Alex Milliken for 19 yards, and it's first and goal of the one, which set up a Milliken touchdown run to make it 28-10 Sparta early here in the fourth quarter. And the Spartans are pulling away in this one. Watch this nice eight-yard touchdown grab by Alex Milliken as they push their lead to 34 to 10 here in the fourth quarter. And Milliken caps to his big day here with his 53-yard touchdown run as Sparta would roll to the 41-10 victory as they improve to 7-0 and they are in the driver's seat to get the top seed in North One Group 3 and win the American Red Division as Jefferson suffers its first loss and falls to 7-1. We knew it was going to be a very physical game coming in. Jefferson hasn't had a loss all year, and they're putting up 30, 40 points, and they're winding up no points, at most seven points against their other opponents. So we knew all week it was going to be a tough one, but we worked hard. Every single day we were in film for like two hours, and we came prepared, and that's what we needed to do. It was uh, really exciting. We were very excited to play this game since the beginning of the season, and uh, we just went out. Everybody wanted it. We uh, practiced hard and uh, came out on top. It was a huge one today. Uh, it's nice seeing everybody come out around us, uh, whether it was on social media or even in school. All of our teachers and people that uh, we're all friends with are all saying ha um, good luck this game because everybody knows it's a huge game. Two undefeated teams playing. I thought it was great. We came out hard. We, uh, we came out knowing they're a fantastic team, you know, 7-0. We're 6-0. So, um, especially off the win uh, last week, it was fantastic. You know, had to come out hard. We had to. So, I thought it was fantastic. It was just a great game. Everyone came together. The community came. Everyone played as a team. It was just a well uh, team effort. First of all, you know, I'm extremely proud of our, you know, our kids and our coaches going out there and uh, playing against a quality Jefferson football team, you know, going out there and uh, playing a, you know, a physical team. Um, you know, I'm extremely happy of our efforts. You know, you just can't say offense, defense, you know, definitely with special teams with huge punt block. Um, but I think everything in this game started with the way our defense played. Uh, you know, that, that team was putting up a lot of points, and uh, I think it's a credit to, obviously, you know, Chris Kappelmeyer and, and the plan that he put together um, because <laughs> we, we actually left him in some bad situations. And, uh, you know, all those guys consistently went out there and, uh, you know, answered the challenge right there. Sparta jumped out to a quick 7-0 lead, and then special teams did their job. Ryan Rossiter with the block punt and a 12-yard scoop and score.
I just found some way to get through them. I swam them, and then I saw the ball come at me, and I blocked it. And then I saw uh, the ball on the ground, scooped it up, and uh, ran it in. and felt really nice. One of the question marks around the Sparta team coming into the season was the offensive line. They've answered those questions, and they had a great second half today when they pulled out this victory. We've been trying all year, um, so we come back. We have four new guys uh, to come up on the line. So we're always trying to get in there, make big holes for Alex, and protect Matt. Ever since day one, you know, people have been worried about what the offensive line would do because we're a lot smaller than some of the lines Sparta's had in the past. And, uh, you know, this year's really been us proving, you know, that it's not all about size. Our strength and our athleticism is enough to, uh, you know, get some guys moving so Milliken can make the play. And I think, we're, uh, I think we're all very happy with how we've done so far. Absolutely. Ever since June, the O-line has just been putting a lot of work. And big shout-out to them, the holes they give me. And, and sometimes it doesn't go our way, but most of the time our offensive line play is phenomenal, and I owe them all credit. The good thing about those guys, you know, there 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 is some you know shaky patches in, in in the second quarter, but when when the game was on the line, you know, end of the third quarter, straight through the fourth, you know, I think those guys um, really started gelling together, you know, making uh, making big plays and staying on blocks, you know, and you know Alex and Matt and all of our receivers making plays. That offensive line loves blocking for Milliken. It's awesome. I mean, uh, you know, those are the guys that get all the glory, but uh, there's a lot of personal satisfaction in blowing a guy up so that your teammates can score and you guys can win, so it's pretty awesome. Yeah, all you have to do is give him a little bit of a hole, and he'll be right through there. So whether he's trucking people over or just juking them out, we can always count on him to get a lot of yards. Jefferson came to this game scoring well over 30 points per game. Sparta's defense was just amazing. Jason Giratano, big on the defensive line with two sacks. Defense just did phenomenal. Everyone played good. Everyone did good setting the edge. And then people like Mike and Robbie did good filling and the line, good pressure. They, I don't two passes, something like that. And they, they were kind of lucky. <laughs> good, well, good throwing balls. And then it was just a great defensive effort. And offense, too. Alex and uh, Jonathan's good. Mate and the line blocked really well. This win doesn't settle everything for Sparta. Puts them in the driver's seat for the division title as they have high point next week but it also gives them a ton of power points. So Sparta, right now, things are looking good to be the top seed in North 1 Group 3 and to claim the division title, but Frank Marciano is not looking past high point. Yeah, it's a huge win for us. You know, they're undefeated, so we got a lot of power points from this. They're, also, they're in our playoff uh, section now, too, so this is a great win for us, and I wish them the best of luck the rest of the season. We knew... Uh going in against Roxbury that we're going to play three playoff teams and it was going to be a test to who we are as Sparta. So going out and showing that, uh, you know, we're strong and we're a good team is really good and I think we're ready to go going into states this year. Uh, I mean, absolutely. We come in here, we know we have to beat the good teams and that's how we're really going to establish ourselves as a powerhouse for Sparta as a whole. So it's nice to come into the playoffs on a, a good note. The defense line was, uh, was stellar, actually. We um, held them. We made sure we got our pressure. We, we had a few slip-ups, but everyone makes mistakes. And we, we, we regroup, and we, uh, we try our hardest to get it back to uh, normal. I actually told the kids, you know, you know high, high points is another playoff game. You know, so, so, so the, the last four games of our season, you know, are going to be playing teams that are, that are going to that are gonna be in the playoffs. So, you know, we, we, we uh, you know, welcome the challenge to, to me as a coach and for us as players, you know, it's actually a blessing in disguise because you get a chance to, to play four straight playoff games before you uh, start the uh, playoffs.